Tom. My name is Dr. Stephen LaBeouf. I'm one of the, the founders and also the president of, of Valencell. And I'm quite very excited to speak with you all today about what's going on in hearables, the era of smart and augmented hearing. As many of you all know, Valencell, we don't make our own wearable devices. We make core technology, core biometric sensor technology that goes inside of those devices. And, and we focus on that, we, we focus on that core technology. So that gives us an interesting perspective in the marketplace because we get to see what's going on in the, in the hearable world. And some of it we can talk about, some of it we can't talk about, but this presentation is about what we, what we can talk about. And so on, this, on the overview today and my outline, I'm gonna talk with you about, give you an overview of hearables, about what the definition is of a hearable, what, how we use it in, in some of the, uh, the hearables in the marketplace today and the macros affecting the marketplace on it. Also, some of the problems solved by hearables. Some problems are uniquely solved by hearables, and I'll give you a couple of examples of those. Then I'll go through some emerging use cases of biometric hearables, and then end with the takeaway. So let's first start with, with the definition. So a, a hearable, uh, a definition we use for a hearable is, is a connected ear-worn device. So it's worn to the ear, it utilizes smart sensing technology in some way. It typically functions as an audio earbud or a hearing aid, but not always. I mean, some hearables are over-the-head headsets, depending on the functionality. Some can even be virtual reality goggles, but typically an, an earbud or, or a hearing aid device. Some examples of marketplace, uh, hearables in the marketplace today, there's several of them, but I wanted to po point out four in particular that are kind of categorized, probably the first and foremost, is sports audio headsets, which have heart rate monitoring built in. And it's a great use case. People exercise when listening to music. And with an earbud, you get much more accurate heart rate readings than you do with a wrist watch. For example, if you're in the gym and you want to measure your heart rate accurately, you can't do that with a wrist device. You're pulling this and that around, and the noise is just too beaucoup high. But with an ear device, you can. You know, people usually don't do ear ups, so you can really take advantage of that, that reduction of motion artifacts. Uh, in, in this, a couple products, actually a few products in the marketplace today with that core technology. And that's our technology, and, and if you go, want to go to our booth and check it out, we have examples of a lot of the devices there. Then also in the lifestyle category, one very popular example, of course, is the Apple AirPods, where they have an inertial sensor inside their AirPods. Also, they have a, an optical sensor, and it provides a, some different types of functionality. And then a, another completely different category is, is hearing aids. So uh, it was announced yesterday evening, I believe, by Starkey of the first hearing aid that has heart rate monitoring and other biometrics built into it. And that was announced yesterday. You can see that device at our booth or check out the Starkey folks uh, the, at their booth. They've got also a really interesting app that's, a, that's geared towards uh, folks who are managing their hearing in that particular way. So it's really, it's really interesting. So let's talk about some of the, some of the macros. I like Gartner's report on this because from our own numbers, it lines up with what we know. And so I'm using Gartner here to, to show you about hearables and, and where this is going. Uh, so hearables are expected actually to outsell all other wearable categories in a few years. Right now, uh, the, the, the size of the marketplace in 2018, about, a, about 180 million or so wearables in the marketplace. And hearables are 33 million units of those. A large part of those are Apple AirPods. I want to say maybe as much as 18 or or 20 million of those devices are Apple AirPods. So their, their launch is, was pretty impressive there. The, the growth of the wearables market is at 20% keg, a really nice clip, but the growth of hearables is almost twice that. And so by 2022, Gartner predicts that the hearables will actually be the single largest category of wearables in the marketplace, even eclipsing that of smartwatches. So at the macro level, I mean, you, know, you, don't, need a, you don't need a weatherman to know which way the wind's blowing on this. And actually, for the rest of this presentation, one of the biggest takeaways I'd really like you to, to take home is that hearables re, re, truly will be the, the dominant form factor for wearable innovation in the next decade. And I'm going to show you some examples why that is. But let's go on to talk about some of the market trends that have bolstered hearables adoption and also innovation in hearables. Uh, and these aren't all of them, but these are some of the ones I find are, are the most interesting and most important. The first one is, as I mentioned to you before, biometrics and earpieces, which Valencell has been largely behind. We now have a partnership with Sunian, who's helped us in miniaturizing that technology much further so we can integrate it deep inside of the ear canal. And not only 
is, is are the biometrics interesting, but some of them in particular, the, bi the blood pressure sensing technology that we developed is especially interesting for a lot of use cases, and so that's driving a lot of interest in, in biometric earpieces. Another one is technology you've been familiar with for a while, th this, this hearing enhancement technology. And, and, you know, Bose has been a pioneer in this category of active noise cancellation. Uh, others have been uh, uh, pioneers in the pass-through technology where you can hear what's going on around you and close it off, and augmented hearing in general. A lot of these technologies have been around for a while, but only recently have they been implemented well enough to be used in an interesting, a smooth way, a seamless way. And when, whenever you can take the biometrics and the hearing enhancement technology and make them come together right now, it really adds some interesting user experiences. And I'll give you an example of one later in the presentation. Another uh, example is the deregulation of over, uh, 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 deregulation of some hearing aids to where you can get them over the counter without a prescription. So what this means is now more people can buy hearing aids. That's, that's good for adoption. But, but also another thing that's happened is a lot of the big hearing aid players, they've got to justify the price points. And so to do that, they've got to add more functionality, add more value. And biometrics and hearing augmentation uh, novelties are a good way to do that. Another thing is smart user interface. Uh, you know, we all are familiar, of course, with Alexa and all these other voice assistants. Well, we're also familiar with what they do well and what they suck at. And a lot of things at times are just totally frustrating. But with a hearable device that picks up your voice so much better, you can, you can have a more seamless dialogue and an on-the-go dialogue with these mobile assistants. And you'll notice that a lot of the hearables that have, have launched more recently have that built in. Uh, for example, one of, one of our partners, Jabra, a lot of their recent uh, Elite series has that built in. And that's been a big driver for hearables as well. And last but not least is the social stigma is essentially gone. I mean, you can thank Apple for this. I mean, I got to say, with all due respect to Apple, that AirPod looks just freaking weird to me. But the fact is, people see people wearing this around in public all the time, and it's really lowered the stigma for folks who make much better looking products. So they really have helped rise the tide, I feel, for that. So let's talk about the problems. So one of the problems that are solved by hearables, and this is by, I'm going to give you two examples, and there's a lot more than this, but this particular one is really bothersome. It's well known in the wearables world. I call it death by discharge. And it's when, especially activity trackers and some smartwatches have this problem where you land in the sock drawer before fitness insights can be made that are really interesting. So I'll give you an example. Let's say, uh, plot to hear consumer enthusiasm versus time, okay? And so let's say you start off with the research phase and you get so excited that you just can't hide it. And you start really getting interested and you, you find, you, you purchase your device and you're digging it, you know, maybe not as much as you thought you were, but that's how many things are in life. And, and then, then you get that out of, body, out of box excitement phase. Now it's time to recharge it. Now the recharging takes longer than you'd like. You kind of start to lose a little bit of interest in it. There's, there's a recharge period, but you put it on, fully charged again. And after a while you're like, you know, I know my heart rate, I know my steps, I'm not really too interested in this, and now it's time to charge again, now it's in the sock drawer. And the problem is that the fitness insights, the time it takes to generate those fitness insights, such as how is your activity affecting your health, what exercises are best for you, what foods are good for you if you're using a food diary, well that time takes a while, but now you're bored out of your mind with the device and it's in the sock drawer. And so one of the ways to get around that is with hearables, because with hearables, people use these devices for, th for immediate needs. I got to listen to music when I exercise, or I'm talking on the phone, or I've got a hearing aid. And it's not about continuous monitoring. It's about having enough touch points over time when people use these devices to put a story together. And you could do that with hearables because people need to use them for other things. And it's harder to do with other form factors. So that problem is really addressed well by hearables. Another one, uh, the second problem I want to talk to you all about is the comorbidities associated with hearing loss. So basically there are a lot of medical issues that are correlated with hearing loss. Basically, if you have hearing loss, you're much more likely to have these conditions. Now, if you can make a device that can combine the peanut butter of hearing augmentation with the chocolate of biometrics or vice versa, you can really make a better candy bar of a hearing device and also, not only that, not dramatically improve public health at a lower cost, which the payers dig. And I'll give you some examples of this. So if, if you have hearing loss, you're three times at a higher risk of falling. You're, you have a three times higher risk of cardiovascular disease, and I think you're going to get a copy of all these slides so you can read these publications. I got the references here. Three times higher risk of diabetes. One and a half times higher risk of visual impairment. You got 32% higher risk of hospitalization. You got two and a half higher risk of mortality, dying. And that, that sucks. Uh, another is, the, on the mental side, is a 30 to 40% 
uh, accelerated cognitive decline in a five times greater rate of dementia. There's some interesting stuff. I wish I had time to talk more about this, but there's some interesting correlations between hearing and dementia now that are just being discovered. And last is, is on the mental side. Just it, when, you have, um, when you have hearing loss, you're much more likely to unfortunately be, so, have, be socially withdrawn because frustrations, not being able to communicate as well as you like, there's a number of things that are associated with that that can be addressed by biometric hearables. The way we're addressing that in the marketplace is through, largely through our partnership with Sunian because we have all this cool biometric sensor technology that really works and is very accurate, but we needed someone to help us make it smaller and integrate into a hearing aid. And so we, we, we're at the forefront of this now. And by the way, I don't know if y'all want to check out the, the RIC, uh, the first RIC in-ear device that measures your biometrics is at our booth, so you can come check it out. You can check out the Starkey device, which is the first hearing aid with biometrics, and also the RIC, which is, is not a product today, but it's a prototype. You can test that out if you like. Now, I want to talk about emerging use cases of biometric hearables. So the, the first I'm going to talk about is in first responder in, in, in industrial monitoring and also military monitoring. The companies we're working with today that are integrating the technology and have already integrated it into military headsets, first responder headsets. And, and the, the big use case there is people, they want to keep track of their assets. There's issues with, okay, are they fatigued? Do they need to be pulled back? And the problem is they're wearing too much crap already, and they already wear the headsets. So you combine the biometrics and the headsets they already wear, and that takes care of that situation. So that's for vital status monitoring. You're going to see products like this into the market in the next couple of years. Then there's medical monitoring. We talked a bit about this before, but you know, imagine the case where someone's got a hearing aid and you're able to turn on every once in a while and track the cardiovascular parameters and map that out and see if they're at risk of a cardiac event, if they're, if they're at risk of exacerbating or having to go back to the hospital. It's big savings to medical care costs and a big public health benefit and a number of other things there that I don't have the time to talk about in this presentation, but maybe in another time or maybe at the booth. If you want to see us out there at the booth, I'm happy to talk about it. And then last here is augmented hearing. Now, this is when you combine the peanut butter of augmented hearing with the chocolate of biometrics. I give you, I'd love to talk with y'all about more examples of this. Some of them I can't talk about, but one I find is very interesting is one of the, the innovators in the space. They developed a technology. If you're hard of hearing and you're talking to somebody, say, over a conversation, a dinner, a lunch, or whatever, and they're right in front of you, you, you want to hear them. And you don't want to hear all the crap going around. You don't want to hear my loud ass voice over here tell, telling some Cajun jokes to somebody. You know, you want to hear them. But then when, when you walk in and, and want to get up and move around, you want that 360 hearing. And so one of the innovations is activity characterization to change the way you hear based on how you move. And, and you can imagine if some of you have hearing loss now or, or have hearing issues or know folks who do, that's a tremendous benefit. To not have to switch between these different modes to have it be very seamless. And when you add biometrics to that mix, it really adds that je ne sais quoi that actually combines it all together. It lets you do some things that you, I guarantee you're not thinking about now, but if, if you thought about them, you go, damn, why didn't I think of that? It's really interesting what's going on in this space. So in closing here, what I hope I've, I've taken away, uh, the takeaways y'all have is hearables really will be the leading platform for innovation and hearing augmentation, entertainment, vital status monitoring, and health management. That, that ship has, has sailed. Uh, hearables will be the, the dominant category in wearables in 2022, and that's not from Valencell's own evaluation, even though we found the same thing. It's, it's from an independent evaluation by Gartner. Thanks for your time.